All right, so today I wanted to make a Let's Talk video about traffic lights and traffic signals in general. Mainly because if any of my viewers out there drive, which I'm sure at least a portion of you do, you have to deal with these things on a regular basis. And even those who don't drive probably still see them and encounter them, you know? I had, you know, always been aware of what traffic signals were and how they functioned long before I ever got a driver's license, you know? The basic premise is, you know, they hang from a pole and have a red light on top, an amber light in the middle, a green light on the bottom, and, you know, green means go, red means stop. Simple stuff, you know, but there's a lot more to them than just that, because, I mean, they've really come a long way. Like anything else in our society, they have evolved over time. You know, some really old ones only have two lights with a red and a green. But, you know, you don't really see those anymore. I'm pretty sure they've all been replaced with ones that have red, amber, and green. Uh, the, real quick, the main reason I did want to uh, make a video on these is because I am currently studying civil engineering. And traffic flow and traffic signals are a part of transportation engineering, which is a branch of civil engineering. So this kind of harks back to something that is, you know, on my mind pretty often based on what I'm studying. But I usually do this with these videos. If I'm not passionate about something, I won't really be able to talk about it. Anyways, so yeah, in current day, you know, three lights. But of course, there are also signals for turning certain directions. Because, you know, here in the U.S., we drive on the right side of the road, and if you turn left, you have to turn across an oncoming lane of traffic, or at least one. In some cases, it could be more than one. So they, you know, came up with the idea to have a protected left turn, which is, you know, those little arrows, green, yellow, and sometimes even red. And I'll use the terms amber and yellow interchangeably because, you know, basically the same thing. So, you know, you sometimes have the... Uh, you know, the three-way traffic light with and then an extra fourth uh, light hole down on the bottom, which will have a green arrow. And then the interesting thing about these ones is that sometimes you have them, you know, where the green arrow will stay on the whole time, and then it'll, you know, turn yellow, then turn red, and then the other way will get the green. Or other times, the green arrow can just, you know, disappear, and then the oncoming traffic will get green at the same time. But then there's the next step of protected left turn traffic lights, the doghouse traffic light, which also has a yellow arrow included. And that one, you know, gives a little more heads up because, you know, it goes green, then yellow, then turns off, and then the other direction gets the green light. It seems that uh, the traffic lights with four lights with just a green protected left, they were uh, a lot more common use back in the day, but then they upgraded it with uh, a yellow light because... You know, it gives more warning that the uh, protected left time span is coming to a close. I assume that if it's just green arrow goes away, other way gets the green, it could possibly lead to an accident if someone's not paying attention. I mean, granted, someone is always not paying attention, but still, you know, having that extra yellow arrow there does give, you know, a little bit of a... Uh, it gives a little bit of insurance, you know. And then, of course, uh, protected left traffic lights evolved into their own lights, as sometimes at traffic light intersections you'll see the thing labeled left turn signal where protected left is, or the left turn lanes are determined by their own traffic lights. And sometimes it's a red arrow, sometimes it's just a solid red light and it's covered up by those, you know, uh, those lens thingies that, you know, make it so you can only see it from a certain angle. Those are really interesting, or really weird. And then, you know, when the protected left goes, you get the green arrow, yellow goes back to red like that. And then, of course, you know, there are similar things for turning right, but turning right isn't as big of a deal because, you know, you don't have to turn across oncoming lanes of traffic in order to make a right turn. And going to different traffic light intersections, there's it's always a different setup, you know, because there could be one lane for turning left, two lanes for turning left, lanes for going multiple directions, one lane for going straight, multiple lanes for going straight. It, it, it's just every different traffic light intersection tells a different story. It's... Uh, and the layout can be easy to follow, or sometimes it can honestly be super convoluted. Sometimes there can be, you know, multiple lanes for one direction and only, like, one lane for another direction, or 
something to that effect. You know, there's always signs to tell you, but it can be a little strange sometimes. And some of the strange things come into play with those lenses that I mentioned earlier. You know, these black uh, lines that go across the uh, visor in the light receptacle that make it so you can only see the light if you're at it from a certain angle, so it blocks out the light if you're at it from a certain angle, because I guess you're not supposed to see it. So then you like drive ahead, and then you can see it if there's sometimes two traffic lights like right in a series, you know? So there's also, yeah, things like that. It's There's a lot of different kinds of traffic lights. There's also uh, those uh, square-shaped ones. The square-shaped ones, which function similarly, where you can really only see the light if you're at a certain angle. So those, you know, it's probably because if you have traffic lights that are close up and they're red, and then traffic lights that are far away and they're green, they would want you to stop and not to go. It's a little weird that they wouldn't just program them to be in sync, but I don't know, maybe there's some sort of conflicting uh, circuit that won't allow that sort of thing to happen. So, that's just an overlay of all the uh, technical traffic light things. Uh, I mean, I find that interesting, but a lot of you might find that insanely boring and have already clicked off this video, but... On top of that, there's also just the fact that we as humans are forced to obey these devices every day of our lives, at least every day that we go out driving, you know? We stop to them, we go to them, we yield to them, and for the most part we obey them. Of course, there are people who just blow through them, run them, you know, just, you know, say screw the law and just drive through it. And of course, one of the most common and annoying situations with a traffic light is when you're driving towards one, it's green, and then it turns yellow, and you're stuck with that conflict of whether you should slam the brakes to stop for the light or slam the gas to make it through the light before it turns red and you get hit by oncoming traffic. It's, you know, it's just kind of annoying because you have to have like split second reaction times and think, okay, do I want to, you know, just fly through or come to a stop? Either way, it's going to just... And it just sometimes feels like it always happens, you know? Sometimes when I'm coming up to a light and I see it's green, I get nervous that it's going to turn yellow and I'm going to have to make that sort of split second decision. And of course with modern technology evolving, a lot of traffic light intersections are now equipped with cameras, so if you go through the red light too late, they'll probably snap a picture of your license plate with those cameras and then mail you a ticket or some crap like that. So that's another thing. And then, speaking of going through red lights, there's also, you know, the such thing as going right on red, where if, you know, the, your vision of the uh, opposing traffic isn't very obstructed, you can turn right on red, you know, while it's still red, unless there's like a sign that says otherwise. Just to, you know, save a few minutes, I suppose. And, you know, it's, it's a both a blessing and a curse, because it can lead to accidents if someone's not paying attention, but still, it's, it's a good thing to have. But still, you know, it's sometimes, like, if it's not indicated, I do sometimes uh, get a little nervous if there's a camera there. It's like, okay, I'm going to go right on red, but is it still going to, like, find me? You know, it's, it's a little weird like that. So, uh, yeah. Also, one other thing is that some, something else that can be a little annoying is when you're anticipating the light turning green, like if you can see the edge of the opposing traffic light, you can see it turn red, and then you're waiting for yours to turn green, and you kind of like let off the brake to like get ready to go, but then it doesn't turn green, either because it, it takes like a hundred years between that one turning red and yours turning green, or if there's a protected left that the oncoming direction has that you didn't notice, and then you just have to re-brake and you're already like halfway across the white line, it, it can be really obnoxious. Because sometimes the older traffic lights, there's only a second or two when all the lights are red, but then other ones, the newer ones, it could be like up to five seconds. It's, it's always hard to predict. So, uh, anyways, that's pretty much all I have to say on traffic lights and traffic signals, you know, the technical side, the psychological side, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, so, thank you all for watching, and take care, everybody.